Hi there. Okay, so we are discussing the AP US History DBQ essay today. And uh, DBQ stands for Document Based Question. And this is a way for the College Board to try to figure out how much information you know about a given topic. Um, it's challenging because you have so much that you have to do in a short amount of time. And so let's get started with the example that I gave you. This one here, the first thing that we do is we always look at the prompt. You need to understand exactly what the prompt is asking you. And so for the purposes of the sample DBQ or the practice DBQ that I gave you, the prompt says, explain the issues that created the greatest controversies during the ratification of the United States Constitution between 1787 to 1788, and analyze how those issues continue to divide the nation during the two decades following ratification, which is 1789 to 1809. Okay, so we have to do two things for this prompt. We're first explaining the issues, and then we're giving an analysis of the issues. Now, in order to do well on this DBQ, before you even look at the documents that you've been given, you have to make sure you understand this time period. And this is the time period that coincides with chapter six of your textbook. This is talking about um, when there is a big debate between the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution. To refresh your memory, the Articles of Confederation was the very first governing body of the United States. It is what I consider the rough draft of um, our government. And while it was good in certain areas, it was also really weak in a lot of areas, namely because it did not unify our country. We, our country was not powerful. Our country was not taken seriously by other countries around the world under the Articles of Confederation. And so if I was a supporter of the Articles of Confederation, I was known as an anti-federalist. An anti-federalist very much wanted to keep the power in state governments. They did not want one unified national government because they were afraid if there was one unified national government, it would lead to a tyrannical government. Now, the creators of the Constitution, the writers of the Constitution, our founding fathers, believed that the articles were weak. They wanted something better, something stronger. And so supporters of the Constitution were known as Federalists. And Federalists had to work really hard to try to convince anti-Federalists to ratify or pass the Constitution. And so during this time, your prompt is saying, even though you know we have the Constitution, and it's better than the Articles of Confederation, there were problems and areas that continue to divide the nation um, for decades after the ratification of the Constitution. And what were those, what were those areas that continued to divide anti-federalists and federalists, okay? So if we are looking at the outline that I sent you with the purple font of this DBQ and the way that I organized it, if you wanna look at that, um, now would be a good time. The first thing that you have to do in writing your DBQ is you have to come up with two things for your introductory paragraph. The first thing you have to do is contextualization. And contextualization is just giving the historical background of the subject that you've been given. Now, everything that I just told you about uh, the history of our country and, and anti-federalists and federalists, all of that would go in your intro paragraph under contextualization. I would even go so far as to even talk about the American Revolution and talk about how American colonists were fighting against an oppressive and tyrannical government. So I've listed five different things that you could include in the contextualization part of this essay. Then you need to go on to your thesis. And your thesis, just like any thesis you write, it needs to have an arguable component, needs to be arguable, and you need to set the reader up for what your body paragraphs are going to be about. So in this case, after reading all of the documents, you need to ask yourself, 
what do all of these documents have in common? Is there a common thread? And the answer is yes. You should be able to find some sort of commonality with all of them. And the common theme of the articles that I came up with after reading them was that both sides, both the anti-federalists and federalists, wanted to avoid creating a tyrannical government. They were fearful that we would experience tyranny like we had just won and gotten our independence from regarding the British crown. And so the thesis that I came up with um, that establishes an argument and sets the reader up for my three bodies is the following. And this is in the uh, document that I emailed you. Even though both anti-federalists and federalists both wanted to avoid another oppressive tyrannical government, there were issues over the ratification of the Constitution that continued to divide the nation between anti-federalists and federalists during the two decades following the ratification of the Constitution. These issues were the debate over, one, the separation of powers, taxation, and the liberties of citizens. And so I, in that thesis, have just set myself up for my three-body paragraphs. So the issues that divided our nation First was a separation of powers. What does that mean? It means that everybody was worried that there would be um, a despotic or tyrannical leader like King George III, and they wanted to avoid that. So we need to come up with a way to separate the powers and have a system of checks and balances so no one group in government is too powerful. And that is um, seen in documents C, H and B. And you'll see in the, in the outline that I gave you all of the information that I wrote in purple, that gives you my topic sentence for um, body one. So what a good topic sentence looks like. It sets me up for my entire paragraph. I have also given you an explanation of evidence one because you can't just say in document C. No, document C is George Washington's letter. And so you would have to say George Washington advised distributing power among the legislative, executive, and judicial branches so that government would not turn into a monarchy or become oppressive. And then you give an analysis of your evidence. And analysis is always the most challenging part because these are your thoughts on the matter and you are arguing how your piece of evidence supports your thesis. So in this case, at the top of this sample outline that I gave you, I wrote something in there called HIPPO analysis, H-I-P-P-O. And HIPPO analysis, these give you the areas of what you need to talk about in the part where you're analyzing um, your piece of evidence. So to recap, evidence is the what, and then analysis is the why, the how, the purpose of the document, what that document does, who was the audience of that document, who was it written for, what did it do, what purpose did it serve. And so um, that's what documents C, H, and B do. They support my argument about the separation of powers, okay? Then going on to body two, this is where I wrote about taxation. And after analyzing all of my documents, the three documents that um, came up about taxation, well, there's two documents, document D and document E. For the third piece of evidence, this is where you're going to bring in outside information. Give me outside examples that support taxation being um, an issue that continued to hurt or separate anti-federalists and federalists. And that would be information from chapter six of your textbook. So you, that's why it's so important to review the material we've been learning all year so that you feel confident in bringing outside information into your essay. Then in body three, this is where I'm gonna talk about the liberties of citizens. What are the freedoms that citizens should have? Anti-federalists and federalists had issues over what they believed citizens should be free to do. Um, and I found two pieces of evidence in the documents that you were given that support liberties of citizens. And they are probably the two hardest documents to analyze out of all the ones I gave you. And that is document F and document J. Speaking of document J, document J, you'll notice, is the map. 
any time you were given a map, an illustration, a picture, um, a chart, I want you to save that document for the end to analyze and try to figure out. And the reason for that is this. Looking at this map in document J, without reading all of the other documents, it would be really hard for me to figure out what is going on in this map. But because I know what's going on in the rest of the documents, it was a little easier for me to figure out that, hey, this map is showing um, our existing and established territory in the United States. And then it shows how we will eventually expand because of the Louisiana Purchase how we will eventually expand all the way to the Pacific Ocean, manifest destiny um, over time. And one of the things you've been learning about regarding expansion, land, territory, is that one of the greatest liberties that an American could have, or anyone could have, is this expansion of land. So in our case, it's expansion west. And so that's why that falls under um, my body three liberties of citizens. Now, if you look on my very last page of the um, A push DBQ articles that I emailed you earlier that has all of my annotations in it, you will notice that on the last page, I give a brief rundown, a brief um, outline of how I want to break down my bodies. You will certainly not have time to do a really detailed um, outline like we are going over right now in the document that I emailed you with the purple font. You're not going to have time to do that. But what you will have time to do is go, okay, body one is this, body two is this, and body three is this. And so you, it's important that you have a brief roadmap so you know what you're actually writing about. Okay, going back to the conclusion on my outline. Your conclusion is different in a DBQ than other essays. Your conclusion in a DBQ is um, how your topic that you've been discussing this whole time, how it relates to another historical event in American history. Please note that I said American history. You're not comparing this to the Ottoman Empire, okay? If it didn't happen in America, you can't write about it in your conclusion. And so for me, a couple of things that came to mind that I could compare this struggle between anti-federalists and federalists with was the North and the South trying to come together during the Reconstruction era after the Civil War. You could talk about that. You could also talk about the civil rights movement of the 1960s and how MLK Jr. tried to persuade the government to end segregation. And so either of those would have been fine. Those are certainly not the only things that you could compare it to, but those are a good couple of examples. If you have any other questions regarding this DBQ essay, please don't hesitate to get in touch. I hope this helped um, and we will go on to the next DBQ this Saturday. Okay, I'll talk to you later.